We're going home. The home of Snowcross Racing. Located in the backyard of series headquarters just outside of Minneapolis, Minnesota. ERX Motor Park has been a foundation for the sport for nearly 15 years. Racers and families from around the world have relocated to the area to train at this esteemed facility. And now, Amsoil Championship Snowcross returns for rounds 11 and 12 of the 2022 campaign. This is Sledhead 24-7. Hi, I'm Travis Muller at, in Elk River, Minnesota for the ERX National for rounds 13 and 14. Season's going good, I can't complain. I'm just happy to be coming here to race and showing up and racing the best guys in the sport here, so having fun. Yep, just got done with first practice. It was, it was good. Big, uh, fun track, I think. They got tons of snow, especially coming off of just last weekend in Deadwood where the track was tiny and narrow, no snow. Um, here there's big jumps. I mean, if you lined up this triple, laid it over the top of Deadwood, we about jumped the whole track, it feels like. But no, oh, it's cool. Big berms, like I said, and uh, there's a couple big triples out there. The snow is really soft because it's cold, and uh, so the setup's a little bit different, but it should be a fun, fun weekend. Well, it's a, it's quite a bit of work, you know. Like yesterday, um, we had parking and stuff that starts at like eight in the morning, and so I got up early at home about six and got in the got in the rig and drove it up here myself parked it myself, you know, took care of everything, got all set up. Um, my mom and dad and brother and wife and daughter will be getting here today. So did the first practice by myself and I, I don't think there's a lot of other pro guys that do that. I'm not, it's not a big deal, but it's just what, what, what I do and uh, what we have to do to make it work. So. Um, just love racing, you know, I've been doing it for a long time now and uh, just like showing up and putting the helmet on and going racing and battling and hammering with these guys. Um, just enjoy the whole process of it, you know, getting ready, working out, I enjoy that. Um, just all the prep and it's just kind of the whole process I enjoy. So. Well, the track is really big and the snow is wide, hopefully. So. <laughs> yeah, this track is awesome. Yeah, they make some good rhythm section and everything. So I think it's going to be good racing tonight. Feeling good, went to practice, just breaking the body a little bit this yeah. morning. You know, I did like the next practice like is at 425 and then ready for the first run at 6. Just get out there, do less less mistake than everyone so we can pull out with good, some good results. Oh, there's no, there's nothing about the wind, it's just, you know, I, I know I'm, I'm fast and I can do it, so I just have to repeat it every week and that's the worst about winning. <laughs> This year, yeah, the pro class has been a lot of different winner, a lot of different podiums. So just being out there and yeah, you know, I'm I'm capable of doing it. So it's so much confidence to me riding the way I've always been riding before. So I feel feel okay about this season. I got some a little bit of a bummer on the third round, but you know, it happens to everyone. So just being here, the health teats means everything. The track is phenomenal. We are really fired up. They have so much snow here. Here we are almost middle of March and it is cold, cold, tons of snow. It's gonna be a blast. Track is big, probably one of the two biggest tracks that we race on all year here in, in probably Lake Geneva. But we are really excited for tonight. We're coming off of a, a, a win in Deadwood in the pro class, which we're really excited about. So here we go. It's going to be some great racing tonight and then again tomorrow night and boy, I'll tell you what, my guys are ready. ERX is the premier practice track and racetrack in the whole country. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited to be here at the RX and race. Uh, the track is uh, gonna be—it's gonna be a huge track, and I hope it's gonna be a lot of uh, different lines. And uh, it looks uh, really fun out there, and uh, I think it's gonna be uh, really exciting for all the fans and 
for everyone out of the track too. I think it's uh, one of the best ones we've had and uh, uh, it's gonna be good. Uh, my result last year, I had uh, three wins and one uh, DNF where I didn't finish. So the results here at uh, uh, ERX last year was pretty good for me. So yeah, I'm trying. Uh, I'm gonna try my best this year too and uh, have fun out there. When we return, round nine is on the line for the Amsoil Pro Class. But first we're getting a never before seen look around one manufacturer's production floor on this episode of Amsoil Garage. It's an extreme environment, snowcross racing, an ecosystem that demands vigor of both athlete and machinery. One manufacturer is giving us a never before seen look inside of their manufacturing plant, where we witness the evolution of a race sled from start to finish. Our tour begins in Valcourt, Quebec, Canada, the home of Skidoo and its parent company, BRP. This is just one of their 12 worldwide manufacturing facilities across six different countries. My name is Daniel Lambert. I'm the plant manager uh, in Valcourt Operation. Uh, now we're producing Skidoo and the line. And uh, the line is there is the first line is the mechanical line we can see there. Uh, we, have, uh, we are in full production mode and we have uh, a lot of fun to produce skidoo. The race sled is a 600cc two-stroke snowmobile tailored for its specific racing environment. Snowcross, cross country, hill climb, etc. These are specialty crafted machines not available to the general public. So what does the manufacturing process look like? Well, it starts out like it does for any other snowmobile, making its way through the production floor with rounds of testing and inspection along the way. And finally, they are graded and shipped for dealers far and wide. But that's not where our journey ends, no. From there, we're going a few doors down to the race shop, where each sled will be fitted for its unique environment. Once a production unit comes off the production line, uh, we take it to the race shop and we make sure that it's ready for racing. Uh, we adapt shock calibration, clutch calibration, and, and engine calibration as well. So we take it here and we make sure that it's ready for our customers to go on the racetrack, no matter where it, where it is. Uh, it might be uh, the mountains, the deep snow, or snow cross track, or even cross country for the Iron Dog people. So uh, we take every product here, we adapt it, and we make sure that it's ready for the racetrack. So there you have it. From the production line to the start line, the race sled. Sledhead 24-7 on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by the U.S. Air Force. Full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform. Join us. By Amsoil. Runs on Freedom. By Polaris. And by Stud Boy. Traction with an attitude. Because, because he jumped and I went wide open. I had like one, yeah. one like. So you had to park in that same hole. Yeah. Okay. I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, yeah. Uh, didn't get the best start out there. Uh, the guy on the side of me jumped to the, uh, just the start, so uh, I kind of dig a hole. So needed to go in the same spot again. So didn't get the best jump, but we made it up to second. So happy overall, just qualifying. So finally, next up. Charge off into the Skidoo corner. 
and charging down the backstretch. Francis Peltier has grabbed the early lead. Looks like Adam Peterson and Hunter Padno with good starts as well. Padno will come to the inside of Peterson and he'll take over second. And here comes Ischel up alongside, trying to move into the number three spot with Emil Hor in tow. Padno grabbing up. trying to make a run at him through the back stretch with him gets a triple triple in there we haven't seen that yet he's up to the outside here coming off the Dennis Kirk corner Ischel taking a different rhythm through here trying to catch Emil Hart this battle for the number two spot oh, Patno continuing to lead by about two and a half seconds so he is taking advantage of this battle between Hart and Ischel to pull out a little bit of a gap but now his sled is slowed Patno may have a mechanical issue he surrenders the lead and it's now a side-by-side -side battle between Ischel and Hart, and Ischel takes over the top spot. Second place might still be contested in this one. Meanwhile, when the Viking Rocket gets out of front, he kicks in those afterburners. He's three and a half seconds out of front. And he can fist pump over that Arctic Cat trouble. He knows he's got a good lead as he comes down through that rhythm section. Back to the big air trouble one more time. Nice one-handed salute to the Pat Towns here at ERX. Off the FXR corner once again. The Viking Rocket is on top of the box here tonight at ERX Motor Park. Quite was good, uh, got a decent jump, was out three and four, I had that inside, so I was gonna be good out from the line angle or from the first corner and uh, uh, made a couple decent or bad uh, lines the first uh, lap, got active or lost one spot and yeah, I could just charge my way up there again and uh, just find any good lines and uh, try to be fast and uh, we made it, so I'm happy. As the athletes embark on the latter half of the season, a consistency has taken shape in terms of who we are seeing on the podium each round. As a result, a championship is within reach for your top five. Saturday night, round 12 is still ahead. Um, yeah, yesterday's final got off to a great start. Um, was running in second, third, going up the hill, and was able to make my way into first. Uh, I think after the coming back down the hill and. Um, ran the first half of the race and it felt like it was just flying by. So it's kind of kind of a new feeling uh, being out front in the final. It seems like whenever you do get out front, everything just goes so slow and you can't wait for the race to get over. And it feels like just nothing's nothing's speeding up. It feels like the laps are taking longer. Um, but this time, I remember coming around and I saw halfway and I was like, it's already halfway. So I was getting pretty excited about that. And um, yeah, I was just trying to hit my marks, trying to find a couple new lines. Um, and I, I felt like. I've, I finally found um, you know, the fast spots on the track that I wanted to take the rest of the race. And, um, unfortunately, just a freak thing. I uh, broke a spring on my muffler and ended up coming off. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's just one of those nights where luck wasn't with us. And, um, but I know that, I know that there, there's a reason as to why you know, we're, we're getting put through these hard times, but um, it's going to make that first win that much sweeter. Yeah. Uh, I was I was a bit unfocused yesterday I think because I was a bit stressed I think in the final when I knew that Elias was behind me and I knew that uh, Francis was behind me also uh, I know that those guys were running good and and yeah, I was a bit stressed, I don't know, I, I, I saw those good lines the last was using, but I didn't try them because I was scared to like lose my position, but I think this, I'm gonna try to stay stronger in my mind, like, uh, yeah, today, and see if I can uh, go for, for the number one pick today. Uh, yesterday was a bit of a cluster. Um, 
First heat, we tangled with another rider, broke our sled, so didn't even finish it. Uh, second heat was really good. We, uh, we passed for the lead, uh, had a lot of fun, was flowing really well. Uh, and then the final, just uh, kind of dug myself a hole on the start. Uh, so spun a bunch and you know I got a horrible start with back of the pack and finished the night. So it wasn't our best uh, final, but you know we're happy and healthy to, uh, and ready to give it a go again today. Focus for today, um, the body's feeling a little sore, so we're going to do our best to get that um, feeling better for racing. And then, you know, just be consistent. I think uh, we get tied up in, in results a lot of times, and I think that we need to be consistent. You know, go for those heat wins, but the main event, let's get a good start. Uh, let's run up with the, with the big dogs, and uh, let's show them what we can do. Still ahead, round 12. The number one qualifier has been close many times, but is still chasing that elusive first win. A round 12 win would be a big comeback for Hunter Patnode. Before we do, we're visiting with one of the track owners and his vintage sled collection located at his race shop at ERX. So here we are, I have with me co-owner of ERX Motor Park and Carlson Motorsports team owner, Chris Carlson. Chris is gonna show me his stout vintage sled collection. Of course, you and your family have such a deep history, deep roots in snowmobiling. So uh, let's do a little bit of a walkthrough first here. Um, I understand all brands here, many of the brands are present. Yes, yeah, we, we try not to uh, leave any out. And uh, these are more, it's more about great sleds from different eras and, and then sleds that have some uh, meaning to, to their family, to racing, childhood, something like that. So yeah, they're all represented. And one that is, is very special, the same model, I understand, of the first snowmobile you purchased when you were a teenager. Yeah, th so this is a 77 Polaris TX340 free air, and this this was the first snowmobile I bought as a teenager, $1,400 back in the day. Um, yeah, and it was a great sled, and, and I found this a few years ago. A guy had it in a garage, covered up in the corner, had 62 miles on it, original miles. So this is unrestored. And we, we pull it out and ride it, and it sure brings back a lot of memories. <laughs> now, of course, uh, his son, Andrew Carlson, and his daughter, Taylor Carlson, she also raised pro women snowcross, so a lot of family history here. Uh, walk me down the line here. What else are we seeing? So that's a 77 TXL. That's the first uh, factory liquid-cooled sled that Polaris produced, and they were great runners, very, very popular back in the day. Um, 72 Arctic. 650 EXT, so limited build, 160 some sleds made, factory race program, triple, uh, triple pipes, uh, great sled, and we still run this one. And this is a Starfire 76, that was race only, so that was very limited production. That's got a uh, cowl crank induction system, so pulls in cold air from the bottom to cool it down, which was always a problem with these free air sleds and had the fancy loop on the handlebars, which indicates that it was designed for turning left. And, uh, and that was a great sled back in the day. And now here we are today, 2022, the national continuous growth year after year. Now our fourth running of the ERX Snowcross National. Well, Chris Carlson, thank you so much for showing us around and thank you for all you're doing, for all the sports that you service here at ERX. You're so welcome, it's my pleasure. Sledhead 24-7 on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by the U.S. Air Force. Full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform, join us. By Amsoil. Runs on freedom. By FXR. Premium outdoor gear that's worthy of who you are and what you love to do. And by Ziegler Cat. Exceptional service backing the best equipment. on track. It's a great start for Adam Peterson and Francis Peltier. Patno cuts to the inside. Three wide for the lead as they head down through the back stretch rhythm section. Head down into the FXR turn and Patno will come out with the lead as he tries to take the line away. Battle for third here. Side 
lane a little bit smoother, and Ishul gonna park him and over goes Ishul. A lot of time left. Cody Camp hunting for a podium finish here tonight. Elias Ishul, meanwhile, he is back in dead last. He'll chip through, and oh boy, contact, and Cam gets tipped off his sled. Pat Note leading by five and a half seconds. So many trials and tribulations for Hunter Pat Note this season, but it all comes clean tonight. Hunter Pat Note is your Anzoil Pro winner. <laughs> This one's the hardest and boy it came hard, I'll tell you that much. The, uh, I feel like I had so many opportunities, I've been leading so many finals and just haven't finished through and man this one, this one feels good. Uh, I mean all glory to God, praise him, because I mean none of this is possible. Everything that I've been able to overcome this year, it, boy this is, <laughs> this is unbelievable and to be able to spend it with my wife and to have her here next to me and have you know my mom, my dad, my brother um, and, and some of my best friends as well. Uh, Man, this is, this is a dream come true. We're heading back to the hallowed hills of Grand Geneva in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin for the first time in three years. 